Oh, I forgot. Okay. All right then. Thank you, Ellen. Um, I think Anthony Donovan doesn't really need an introduction, but I just want to say, Anthony, it is a pleasure for all the years we have been working together. Um, Anthony is a very active member of New York City Veterans for Peace um, and has done other presentations to our chapter meetings. Tonight, he'll be talking about his trip to Iran, what he's seen, his experiences, and, and welcome, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to set my timer. So I and think we're going to go for about 25 minutes uh, or so with slides, and we're going to stop the chat, and uh, we'll open it up about in about 25 minutes and take some questions. And uh, of course, Susan and whoever wants to ask questions, I'm really happy. That's really where it should go. Um, it's an honor to be here for, with Veterans for Peace. You saved my life many years ago. Uh, the veterans of our wars have. You instructed me and uh, that video you just showed about the earth, it, it's so true. It's so, we're in such a, your voice is so badly needed. So I just wanna do anything I can to support all our groups represented here, Fox Christie and the Mennonites and uh, Veterans for Peace, every, everyone. Uh, the message, let me, let's, uh, we'll just start, let's start uh, a screen share, get going here before my time is up. Here we go. I think, hang on one second. I have to hit, thank you, share sound, good. So, uh, Ellen, you, that's, that's, that's working. Oh, I have to hit play. Thank you. Yeah, looks good. Okay, if I hit. So this is my first time doing a slideshow in Zoom. Thank you. Um, I guess if we have one picture from this entire half hour or so, this is the one that I wanted to share. Because as that video just showed, we are on this earth, delicate souls trying our best to get by I know the youth of Iran that I met want decent jobs, want to care for one another. Uh, the call over there is to please end our sanctions. Please rejoin JCPOA. Uh, and please don't listen to the propaganda machines that we have in the West that really are out there to cause the downfall of, of their regime. And, uh, so it, it's it's stop the warmongering as that as that video said basically and uh, so thank you and I think of these women you'll notice the the one of the mothers in the background behind these girls has no hijab there were a number of women around Iran uh, that were did not have uh, head coverings I was there before Masha was murdered Masha was murdered uh, in the in the hands of the government. This no doubt was wrong. Um, it was horrible and there is very rightfully an uprising, but I'm afraid this uprising has been really taken advantage of greatly by Saudi Arabia, Israel, and those Iranian TV and media stations here in the United States, largely funded by those in our country and Saudi Arabia and Israel that really want this country down. So that's really, uh, I've been wanting to go to Iran for a long time and I'm so th thrilled. And through a meeting with uh, Mary and, and Doug who are on this call uh, at the UN, I was introduced to Ed Martin and this, and this trip became a reality. So I'm forever grateful. I'm forever grateful to the Iranian people um, for their tremendous hospitality and their tremendous openness. And uh, I just felt, and they really helped me get rid of the fear. I had a fair amount of fear, and I'll get into that for a moment before I went. 
So there we are, there's the earth, the precious earth. And Iran is to the right and you can, see, well, let's get a little close up there. And for, I'm sorry, I know many of you know this very well, but for those who might be watching and recording that don't know, you can see Afghanistan on one side of Iran and Iraq on the other side, two places where we've had massive wars, our military has inundated and destroyed much of these lands. Uh, our CIA has been throughout. So Iran is surrounded pretty much. And across the way, you see Saudi Arabia, who basically wants the end of Iran as well. Um, so they're, they're surrounded by a number of countries. So there's a little, little bit of the geography. This was our trip, basically, that I took with about 20 other wonderful people who are bridge makers from Canada and US primarily, not all. Um, we went from Tehran to Qom, the holy city, to Kashan, to Isfahan, to Yads, and to Shiraz, and back to Tehran. We had three weeks there. Coming into Iran, let me see if we have some. Well, this, we, you saw that beautiful movie in the greenery of our precious planet. But this is why people in Iran, they're a big concern for them and everyone in the Middle East actually, and much of Northern Africa, China, is our environment. This is basically sand, you can barely see the earth. So when I landed at the airport, this is actually after I checked in my hotel, I got up the guts, let me see. Uh, let me see where we... Yeah, let me, let me go to this slide. Th this slide, I'll skip around, I'm sorry. This slide is, before you go to a country, it's always wise to check our State Department <laughs> to see, I guess, maybe not. In this, I've been listening to my State Department for far too long uh, about Iran and not listening to people like Medea or Martha Hennessy and Doug Hostetter and who've been there and, and uh, Ed Martin, they've been there and they ease my mind about going there. But our State Department basically tells you, you can be kidnapped, you can lose your life. And if you are kidnapped, they can't do anything about it. They can't help you. So don't ask them to help you. They say, do not travel here. They say your devices can be confiscated, taken and everything uh, in them will be scanned and <laughs> not yours. So these are, these are the warnings. They're very stern, they're very clear. And they're, they say this is a very highly dangerous place. My friends from Iran, and, and I don't wanna belittle those Iranians at all. And, and I also don't wanna pretend I'm an expert. I've had a long, many meetings with Iranians over the past 40 years actually. But um, I've never been there before this May. So I don't, I'm no way, shape, or form a scholar of Iran. And those who had to flee Iran because of the threat of death and because, and people in their family who did die or lost their jobs, I, uh, and found home here in the West uh, and still have very strong feelings about the current regime. Please know that I respect and listen to you and, and to all people. I, I don't pretend that and want to give one side of the picture. But to me, it's been really very poorly slanted and Americans know very little about Iran. I include myself. So I arrive in the airport and basically this is in the, this is around two o'clock in the afternoon. So that sand that we're looking at from above in the plane, it's pretty thick. And uh, here's a little video. This is three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I, I want you to know that it was very, I asked the concierge, let's see, at this hotel, this is Said who, who greeted me at the airport and, and my, my fears started to go down when I met him, I was all alone and uh, he brought me to my hotel and I had to take off. So I had to go back to this concierge and say, hey, is it okay if I go outside? Uh, and, you know, can I walk down the street? I wasn't sure, um, but that's what I did. And that's when I took these shots. I just went out there, but I was fearful. I really 
had fear. Uh, and I'm sorry about that. But these are the people that helped me. And this is um, our wonderful leader, uh, Dr. Marteza Rezeza. And this is inside one of the many mosques. I won't have a lot of slides of the beauty of the mosque in Iran because you can look them up yourself uh, in, in, uh, on, your, on your Google. They are extraordinarily beautiful and many hundreds of years old. And this is one of the more beautiful people you'd ever want to meet. Uh, extremely open. There was no question I felt in Iran that I couldn't talk about. Nuclear weapons, women's rights, uh, imprisonment, uh, sanction, anything I could bring up to anybody. I never felt someone was looking over my shoulder. Um, let's see. So yeah, this, all right, so I am showing one, your typical, that is the moon up there. It was a beautiful night in Isfahan. Everyone knows this. And I grew up, of course, like many of you, with thinking of flying carpets in the area and uh, a lot of mystique in, in this area. We've got quite a different view of Iran. Uh, since the 1979, I think we still have, we're still stuck, many of us, with that, with us, them screaming death to America and, and burning our flag. And I think that's what many people are still stuck with. Matter of fact, I know our State Department is and repeats this. I've spoken to many, many in our, um, many Congress people's office about Iran, and you still get this. Uh, let me see, I just... I uh, very briefly, I would say a few words, and I, I, I again want to welcome you to a land of a 7,000 year of civilization. Okay, so yeah, you just heard <laughs> 7,000 years old, it's true. And there's wisdom and intelligence in this land that, uh, is very evident in the people when you're speaking to them. And they're very highly educated. Uh, I mean, higher rates of education than here in the States. And more women, I think 60% of the uh, university students are women. There are more doctors, women doctors per capita in this country than in the United States. Uh, and the literacy rate bef during the Shah's time, as I recall, was like 39%. It is now close to 90%. So it's a very literate, very intelligent, very well-educated people. This was a, we went to several universities and I have no time to go into them all because, and I'd love to. Uh, I recorded some of the, the professors and the imams that were speaking there. Um, but this is, a, this is the first day in Iran. We went to a very conservative uh, university. And this is a professor, Laranjani, who, uh, let's, I, I didn't catch, I, she was, you know, hang on, let's see if we can. I hear on the beliefs of some of our prominent uh, figures in the Shia, uh, Shia contemporary Jewish or mm -hmm. scholars such as Martin Mikahari and uh, some other prominent uh, Shia Jews in some other part of the Islamic world such as Alam Fazlullah and Dal Chansuri who present a new approach, uh, I can say the reformist approach to women's uh, issue, the status of women in Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to develop this approach and uh, we ho I hope we could be successful in this way. So this is one of the more conservative um, universities, religious universities in Iran that, that I was in. And what this professor uh, is asking is that she wants to get in this university a women's program going. And it won't be a radical one, but it will, she's really interested in, and she's saying this in front of her peers, male peers, uh, the president of this, this is not a secret thing behind the, She's saying this very openly to us and willing for me to record her saying this, but she's asking women to come to Iran and study at their university, women's studies, and to help them form this program in this concert. So God bless her and God bless her openness. She is very interested in reforms. This of course is all before the current um, crisis that, that, that is happening in Iran. But uh, anyway, 
So I'm jumping around here, excuse me. This is a library. <laughs> so Iran, like I said, people are pretty well, this is a pretty new, but a great library. It's in a mall actually. And uh, I'm bringing this up because, um, you know, once again, our image of Iran, a bunch of, uh, well, whatever. Um, so this is a library, but in the far left down there below on the ground floor, I went over to that section and it turns out it's a children's section. I met an amazing person I want to introduce you to. And if you want to see a real typical Persian face, look at this girl, because that is quite a Persian face and that's her mother. So let's listen, let's listen to her for a second. And uh, please notice when I say, hey, I'm from New York, watch her body language, if you don't mind. So, so we're, we're from different places. They're from Canada, you know where Canada is? Yeah, yeah. There's also another person. I actually follow her on YouTube. Like, I'm actually subscribed and I almost saw every last video of her. She's a Minecraft YouTuber. Minecraft is one of the most popular names. So games, I keep going. Anyway, it's almost as popular as Fortnite. It's still the same level. You know Fortnite? Okay, no, but I haven't read. It's a video game. Like they know. They know. And it's very nice Funnies, yes. Alright, also from Canada. Okay, that's the magic word. And I'm from and I'm from New York. I'm from New York. Yeah, well, Oh, you literally. She's so cute. Okay, they're from. Just hold them as tight as anything. Okay. You can go down. Okay. Those are all your, what do you mean? They're all the books you read recently? Mm, yeah, most of them, apart from a few, because I have some duplicates. Mom, my yeah. mom, downloaded some books for me. And, and they're duplicates, yeah. you see, she by accident got a duplicate. The pictures are different, that's why. Right. Mothers sometimes do that. All mothers sometimes <laughs> duplicate things. I actually don't know if that's true if all mothers duplicate things, but what a sweetheart. And she knows a lot more about the kids' world in my country than I certainly do. Um, since she's an avid reader and she's a genius, I loved meeting her and her mother. And I love meeting everyone in Iran. I hate to tell you this, but I, I had such a great experience. I, I'll get into this maybe later, but I might run out of time. <laughs> Um, but I, so, you know, I didn't travel in a bubble. I was with this group, but I went for walks by myself every night by myself, no one around. I just walked any direction just to discover. I felt very safe doing that. I, after a while, the layers of fear and New York city that in my own city that we have, I didn't have to have that in Iran. I did not feel that in Iran. And I would just go out and I just couldn't believe it. People were picnicking at night, families in the street. I don't have enough time to show you these pictures, but um, felt very safe meeting people at night in Iran by myself. Okay, I'm talking a little too much. Here we go. Hello to all of American people. We are Iranian, we are in Shiraz now. I just want to send a message to you and just if you want to ignore politics and everything, uh, I want to say that uh, Iranian people are really kind and hospitable. Please come and visit us. In every nation, you know, in every nation. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> so my pleasure. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I say to everybody. I, I know uh, there are several, you can take a tour to Iran. It, it, it's, a, it, it's a crisis they're in now. A, a little bit, not exactly like our Black Lives Matter crisis here, but a little similar. Uh, there were tourists coming to our area during Black Lives Matter from other countries, but uh, you can still go. And I know that the Hikmat tours, the tour I went on, has had a couple of tours during this time. Um, I'll, I'll get into more of that later. Let's, but uh, thank you. You're, you've got an official welcome from these wonderful women. Um, and I got that welcome 
all over the place. And I, I hope to go back in the fall. Um, please contact me. Con and if we don't run out of time tonight, please contact me with questions and things I don't get to. Um, okay, let's see what we got next. Okay, this is at a mosque. Um, just like in our churches and in our synagogues, we have uh, people that can have all kinds of different professions and backgrounds, but they volunteer at their mosque. I mean, at their synagogue or at their church in our mosque, they do volunteer work. So this was a volunteer at a mosque and we got speaking. I thought he was just the guide, but turns out he is a, a nuclear physics. Uh, he's a teacher in, of nuclear physics and he works in the nuclear. And so we had a long discussion about nuclear weapons, <laughs> what else? And, and we had a long talk about that. And, and he was telling me, absolutely not. We can't, do, we don't do that. We don't believe in that. And, uh, and I said, look, would you mind just saying a little something on tape for me? And he said, sure. Yes, uh, my name is Mehdi. Our uh, leader, Imam Khamenei, has said no Iranian should uh, go to make any nuclear bombs. And it's a fatwa. Uh, our our uh, um, leader of Iran, Ali Khamenei. Okay. Thank you. So I know I'm going to get a lot of pushback. I always do. You're going to believe the Iranians? I'm like, well, I believe this gentleman. Yes, I, I really do. However, I know our representatives don't know the offices of our Armed Service and Appropriation Committee. They're the people in the office that are involved with this subject do not. Matter of fact, when I lobbied there in 2016, when I said, can we think of this before the treaty, talking about nuclear weapons, would you think about disarmament? And, you know, they were like, what about Iran? This is was the common response, that in North Korea, of course. And I'd like, okay, what about Iran? <laughs> they don't have any yet. It's been proven. Um, anyway, we are the ones that got out of the JCPOA. This is our crime. Biden promised he would get back in and we haven't. What are we doing? It's really important that we do. So anyway, sorry, I get a little emotional. Yike, some of my slides might be out of place. Anyway, this is the World Cup recently. Uh, I'm not gonna get into it too much, but Americans um, got a chance to see Iranians uh, doing something else besides trying to kill Americans, right? So they are playing with the Americans. And if you know, I, I boycotted this World Cup myself, personally, although I love the World Cup, because uh, I was very upset about a couple of things. One is about finding out about the hundreds of workers that were died building those stadiums without a peep from our media about it. And, uh, and, and the and the journalist that tried to cover some of it, we find out has died over there uh, of quote unquote natural causes, a young man, young journalist. And of course, the other thing is their stance on in Qatar about homosexuality and their refusal to let any team play if they represented this. So I put this uh, out there um, because we are calling Iran still a terrorist state, they are an enemy state, and uh, they kill people. Right now we talk about how much people they kill, yet we do not talk about the hundreds that died building our stadium for these games recently. It, it's not mentioned. Their lives are equally as important. Um, so we know that they did not sing their national anthem and our press said these people, their families are gonna be suffering when they get home, they'll be in prison. We heard a lot of things. Uh, that's not true. They were greeted at the airport, they're home with their families. None of them have been in prison, none of them have been tortured. Ah, okay. So sorry to jump into some of this stuff, but this is a, this is a tweet that our Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, put out. Uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau put out. Our Senator Mitt Romney put out. But before they got it, it got 
100,000 likes uh, in, in our stratosphere here. And what does it say? What does Trudeau say? Canada denounces the Iranian regime's barbaric decision to impose the death penalty on nearly 15,000 protesters. That's what it says here, the death penalty. Uh, these brave Iranians are fighting for the human rights. Yes, I, we continue to stand united in support of them and united against this regime's heinous actions. Well, this was false. There's been no threat of death penalty, not for 15,000, those it was taken down. But this is the stuff that's put out. And who was this put out by? And it spreads widely through our media. Who put this out? Iranian International TV, that's what it's called. If you go online right now and Google Iran protests, Iran International TV comes up, they're like the first hit that came up for me. They're, they're the most popular hit. Well, who funds this TV station? Guess, no, not the United States, no. Uh, Saudi Arabia, it's a Saudi Arabia funded channel. Um, so they're behind so much of the, of the misinformation. Have people died? Yes. We, it's really hard to find out who and, I, um, and how much, rather. Uh, we know there were two executions. There are two, not 15,000 threatened, two. And we know, well, we, we don't know, the United States don't know, but what we were told... Who were these two? Who was the last one that was all over our media everywhere? New York Times, everyone covered it. Who were they? What was the last one? He was a protester. Did I, do I have a slide on that? Yeah, Iran takes a hard line against and takes a swift second execution, entrenched against the authorities. Okay, well, from what I can gather from reliable sources in Iran with video to back it up, the second, this second person, and God bless him, he's a young man, killed two people. And that's why he was executed. He was not executed for protesting. So I guess truth is really hard to come by. That's all I need to stress here. I'm not going to say I have it at all. But when you speak to people that are there, they can help verify. They have videos that we're not getting. Uh, but they have a video of this person who is promoted as a brave protester, and, and maybe, maybe he is on many levels, but he did something quite wrong and he murdered two people and that's why he was killed. But you won't hear that in our press. And I think we should be hearing a more balanced and that's maybe why. So another person that I, I this, is, this is just two days ago. I said, so look, are there massive protests going on? This is, happens to be in Tehran. Right now in Tehran, he goes, no, not for the past month. I said, really? Uh, because our media is saying this protest is still going on. He goes, no, it's been quite quiet in Tehran. Little small things here and there, but nothing big. I'm like, and what about the hijab? What about, he goes, well, look, you want me to send you some clips? So I'm going through the mall now. I'll send you a few clips. So here you go. I just, these are just, just see for yourself. It's just one, I just, I'm not, you sent me several. These are clips of women. There's a woman walking with her younger sister, or her child. Two other women with baseball caps on. Um, this is a bad video because, well, it, the, the quality is lousy. I think he's, should be himself. But you're gonna see, he's walking through the small right now. This woman does not have a job on. I can't really make it out because it, it's distorted, but these women don't have a hijab. These two don't have a hijab on. This woman doesn't have a hijab on. That woman doesn't. The woman to the right and the left. The one that she doesn't. Uh, this woman doesn't. They don't. This woman doesn't. They seem quite normal. This is in Tehran two days ago. These women don't. This woman doesn't. Uh, these. Two women don't. Um, you know, he's just walking for 10 minutes. He's walking around. He's just showing me. Okay, look, I'll just show you what's happening. 
do the morality police are not rounding up everybody as we're led to believe. Right there. Anyway, um, <clears throat> that, that's just a little bit, just so you have a little balance. I'm not saying there aren't morality police and there aren't. There are, and there are people getting hassled, I believe, but it's not as widespread as we are led to believe. And you just, that's two days ago and you saw something yourself. Excuse me for reading, this is going back 40 years ago. 40, this is 1983. The next month, it'll be 40 years that I did this interview. I'm gonna read from an interview from this book of the Iranian diplomat at the UN. That is a diplomat, Mr. Asadi. Uh, sorry for reading. When there is justice in the world, this is him speaking, writing, speaking. When there is justice in the world, there will be peace. Peace is our natural principle. Uh oh, that means my time is up. Wow, I just finished this. War is the exception, the aberration. Greed and violence are in the self, are elements which are increasingly becoming institutionalized. Since the US government's coup in 1953, we did have a coup there, we're the ones that put in the Shah. They have been the main enemy, the US, imposing their view economically, politically, and militarily. This is 40 years ago. The propaganda has been, quote, for no reason, these people have gone crazy and they're against modernization. Hasn't changed much. We are now an independent government. The superpowers don't like it and hope to destabilize the revolution. Since 1980, that was three years before this interview, we have been at war with Iraq, whose aggression is backed and supported by the United States. Saddam Hussein has bombed civilian populations, something we have not done. He must be brought to trial. We're harboring 2 million Afghan refugees. We are not against the US, the people of the United States, but the government policies. I wanna thank the Iranian people for knowing the difference, for not, and in, in this interview, in a time of war, when Iraq was invading their country with our backing, he could tell me back then, look, we're not against the people of the US, it's these policies. So I don't know how Iran keeps their heads that war was brutal. They lost over a million people. They were invaded. It's right on their border. It was, they lost the best and the brightest, they say, in that giving their lives. It was very real. They had just become a new nation. They were trying their best to do what was right for their country. And as soon as they, as soon as they become a nation, they're invaded by whom supporting. So we, we have a lot, um, I, I, my time is already up. Let me, let me play one more clip if I can. Alan, are we okay to go one more clip? Yeah, or something. I think looking at right, the go ahead. Um, I, I wanna, this is 20 years later, I interviewed Ambassador Javad Zeri for a documentary called Dialogues. So this is uh, 2004, May. I mean, just very, yeah, I opened my documentary with him. He is a beautiful, he is a beautiful man. I think looking at the reality mm -hmm. uh, and trying to understand realities and trying to, mm -hmm. uh, to look at other people, not simply from your perspective, but from their perspective. And once in every while trying to look at ourselves through the perspective of others would be a great help. Well, well said, and wouldn't that be a great help if we could only look through the perspective of others. And I thank the Iranian people for helping me do that and overcoming the fear that's been inbred in most of us of Iran, certainly most in our State Department and in our armed service and appropriation committees. <laughs> so um, I, I'm just gonna, this is our, our embassy that was taken over. I wanna ask the question, how many, U.S. citizens died in the taking over of our embassy. That horror scene, death to America. How many of us were killed? The answer is zero, not one. 
were killed. So much for the brutal. I just want to say also, they're the greatest population outside of Jewish people outside Israel in the Middle East is in Iran. Americans don't know that, they should know it. This is a synagogue in Iran. Uh, there's a second largest population. Zoroastrian faith, this is their sacred flame is kept alive. Uh, and th this, is, this is where one of their beautiful, well, ancient sites, the Zoroastrians still practice today there. And I just want to show you very quickly, this is an Armenian cathedral, very much still alive in a whole Armenian area of this, the books. And I want in this cathedral area, there is a map of Turkey and the Armenian genocide. We have only come to recognize here in this country, the Armenian genocide. Iran recognized it right from the start for they took in many, many, many thousands of Iranians during that genocide. So they know well why the Iranians came to Iran. So Americans should know that Iran has been harboring refugees from all around them. So God bless. Um, <laughs> well, this is a house of a professor, and I'm just going to show this, this professor in Iran. Uh, he is hugging who? This, he's very proud. This is in his home. He graciously uh, put us up uh, and gave us a great meal, but he's hugging Pope Francis, and he's very proud. He loves Pope Francis. So on this note, uh, I, I've done about half my slideshow. <laughs> you can see the other. But thank you so much for listening. Uh, now we can open up the chat for any other specific questions. Um, Anthony, can you stop sharing so we can see you and, uh, and the screen? No, I don't want to stop sharing. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, do I, how do I? How do I get? I can't see my cursor for some reason. Uh, I didn't mean to do that. That's Anthony. He just doesn't know how to stop sharing because he's a show yeah. Guy. Well, maybe a oh, here we go. I had to get in. The, okay. <laughs> Thank you all for listening. I've gone over time. Uh, so I'm happy to. Yeah, thank you. I only hear I only hear one person clapping. Darn. Oh, well. We, we all are. Everybody's I love you. I know. Islands by I know. It's a sound of one hand clapping. Right. <laughs> Many it's, of us. It's all of us. Anthony, thank you. And it's time for questions and answers. We'll give it like five, five. ten minutes. Five Mark minutes. has a question. What? No. Am I kidding? <laughs> no, I see Sherry's hand is ha hand is okay, raised. Okay. I would ask you all if we can, if you can find the the um hand on your computer. That helps me to see people. But Sherry, go ahead. Thank you. Oh, I thank you. Thank you. Okay. Sherry first, and then we'll take everybody else. Thank you. Um, thank you. Mine was specific to the education levels being so high. Um, I wanted to find out if he had any, uh, Anthony, if you have any knowledge about the education of immigrants and, and for example, many Afghans grew up in Iran, but they're precluded from going to education. Have there been changes and are they included in that 90 plus percent literacy rate and education rate, or is that specifically for Iranians? Thank you. Great no. presentation. No, thank you very much, Sherry. And it's a very important question. And I'm not going to pretend to know the full answer. I know there are Afghans that are educated, but what's the percentage? I don't know. I know I can get that information for you. I do know I met a number of Afghans who are really desperate. Listen, that was our war. They are flooding over to Iran. That tells you a lot. They come to Iran. They And they're, it's hard. It's really hard for Iran to find jobs for everyone, they can't, but they are, they have lots of refugee camps. I haven't been there. I know our leader is leading a group to that area. It's it's to the West. And um, I know there's a couple of people on this call that may have an answer to that, but oh, uh, sure. It came, I'll get it back came to from you. your, it came from your question or your statement of more than 90% education rates. And I'm just trying yes. to fra frame your percentage. Thanks so yeah, much. Yeah, uh, of uh, citizens, I believe, and uh, thank you. And citizens include all different faiths and nationalities, 
for sure. So if they're not, if they're not, if they're Iranian citizens yet, yes, I do have a slide of a farmer who holds cl uh, who holds a classroom for Afghanis teaching. They do that for free, and uh, so there's a classroom. He for anyone that works on his farm, and there's many dozens. They get free education on his farm. That I know. Thank you, Shirazis. Uh, I just oh, want to, everyone wants to ask. Go ahead. I just yeah. I just want to thank you, Anthony. It was a fantastic presentation, oh. and it was so much. I mean, uh, you gave a perspective that we are unable to give because as, as an American who has gone there and has spoken to all kinds of people, when we go, we're with family, we don't get the perspective that you got. And, and um, the way you framed the whole visit was so moving and so beautiful. And we thank you for that. Really terrific. And you touched you. everything, you touched on everything. Well, not really, but thank no, you so no, much. No, I mean not everything, but, but 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 so so much of um, the misconceptions that people yeah. have about Iran and Iranians and yeah. beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Anthony. I just have to tell you, you made me cry and yeah. cry and cry <laughs> with this I'm... presentation, <laughs> and I can't thank you enough. I can't thank you too enough, either. Thank you so much. I, I, there's a section I didn't get to, but it's going through the, the mountains and the rivers and the streams. We didn't get to see some of the beauty of nature. Beautiful so we part. need part two. It's a beautiful. Uh, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Part two. Or okay. post it, or post it somewhere. Thank you so much, both of you for all. Thank you. I'll, I'll, any other? And be, I know we have business to do, so. You're, no, no, you're no, no. We've got more questions, Anthony. So You're in charge. Right. <laughs> Um, Ellen and Tarek. Oh, I'm sorry, Rachel. Go ahead, Rachel. Rachel. I put Rachel up. You got it. Uh, okay. Thank you. Anthony, thank you so much for your presentation. I'm so touched. And this is a pure uh, example of seeing is believing, you know. And also that reminded me of the time when I visited uh, Turkey, then uh, Saudi Arabia. And uh, it was, uh, yeah, really a great uh, opportunities to rearrange my understanding and uh, uh, I, when you met that uh, the uh, nuclear physicist at the <laughs> who are volunteering as an interpreter there I, I think you're truly blessed uh, for that timing you met that kind of person uh, you are amazing and uh, uh, well he is very well educated and of course he has a, such a great uh, command of language but the little girl at the library, she was so cute and spunky, and um, uh, she she was able to speak English so fluently. Um, my personal experience in Japan, we've learned um, English from um, middle school all the way through, you know, college at least. Uh, well, at least until the high school, six years of language education. Then, if you go to college, ten years altogether. But it is very very hard to speak. Um, to be able to speak reading and uh, writing it's a different things but um, do you think the people in uh, uh, Iran has such a, a great uh, level of a uh, speaking ca capability like that no not most but certainly uh, no not most but uh, they're more educated than people here I think and especially with other languages yes mm -hmm. and I was just really really fortunate he wasn't our guide there he was someone I met. Uh, he asked me if I needed some help uh, understanding something. I was walking by myself and we just got talking. But yeah, oh, that's yeah, no, we are guided. I think whenever we take a risk, all of us and everyone on this call have, because they believe everyone in the, that I know on this call mm -hmm. has done this. You, you've felt that something's not quite right here. Let me go see for myself. And, <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, like you, Rachel, your work constantly. Thank you. Well, in 2020, I went to uh, um, uh, Central America backpacking for the first time in my life. Wow. And I've met so many uh, German and Swiss girls, young girls in their early 20s traveling to, uh, just one or two together or alone. And they've been traveling Nicaragua or those areas that 
I was, I would never ever dare to go because my information about those areas is like very dangerous and you know, uh, you're not supposed to go there alone. But they said, oh, it's okay, everything's fine, you know, like that. Then I thought, okay, I think maybe we are controlled by fear. There must be something that our government doesn't want us to see, right? So I, I think it is very important mm. just go there and to see by your own eyes. And this is the perfect example. And thank you so much for your presentation, Anthony. I really mm. appreciate it. And you I'm looking know. forward to this number two. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know very well we, we need to maintain enemies for our war, war yeah. machine. Yeah. And that's what it is about. And you, Susan, stress this very well. Okay. Last question, maybe? Who knows? Ellen and Tarek. I... <laughs> Oh, Tarek. Oh, you're muted. Alan, muted. <laughs> Sorry. And I, thank you, Alan, so much for, I couldn't do this without Alan. Okay, Tarek. No, see, uh, Ann and Ahmed and Rachel have made what I have to say much, much harder. Because now I have to thank them also for what oh. they said. And yeah and seconded a hundred percent it was absolutely beautiful anthony and your mm. politics are great and it is so because they're infused with truth and it's so good to hear that and it's important for us to hear that it's very important for us to hear that so i am going to push to have this second presentation well <laughs> uh, you have to do it anthony it's no what two ways about it you've got to do it so you should start preparing because we're going to do it we're going to have a second presentation. I had a question. I still have a question. I'll ask you some other time because wait. It, wait I like questions. It was so full what you what you presented. Thank you. I don't, I don't need to divert it with another. It's a political question. Well, I'll ask you another time. Okay, and I, maybe I'll just. I guess we'll wrap it up. Oh, Alice has. Wait, one more and Doug. Wait, 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 yeah. wait a second. Wait. Yeah. Wait a second, everybody. Right. We've got hands. I'm going to put Doug up here. I was just going to say, hi, Doug. It's what does Doug know you. about Iran? <laughs> Thanks so much, Anthony. This, this was really, really fabulous. Great mm -hmm. pictures, great interviews, and especially the, the recent video clips were, were amazing. I mean, we just don't get that kind of information here. Uh, my question was, uh, did you run into any Catholics in Iran? And has the Vatican done anything in the way of peace building or bridge building? Wow, that's a good question. I, um, I, I know we had a Catholic priest on, on our tour with us. Um, so no, I did not. That's why I'm going back, actually. <laughs> I, I am because I want to go to, an, I want to go to synagogue. Uh, I want to delve more into that. And we, there, there are Catholic churches. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and Morteza tried to get me there one day and we we couldn't do it. We couldn't work out the logistics. But two of us wanted to go to mass. And so there is Catholic mass there. And as far as I know, this Pope Francis has been reaching out to everyone. And that picture I showed of the professor from Tehran, he clearly introduced himself as a Muslim and was fully embraced by his holiness. But that's a Good question for me to learn more about. And I, I know Mary Yelenik is on this call and she would know a lot more about that as well. And you know, Mary. So thank you for that very important question. Yeah. Thank you, Doug. Alice. Uh-oh. <laughs> I, I just want to say it was fabulous, Anthony. And I was just so struck when you spoke to that physicist <laughs> because the Ayatollah has put a fatwa on nuclear weapons. And when we were negotiating the ban treaty, Iran was fabulous at the UN. They were so helpful when we were negotiating the treaty to prohibit nuclear weapons. They were totally in our corner and wonderful. And I just think it was like so serendipitous that you met that physicist. And he's telling you this because, you know, that's such a big concern about Iran with their nuclear weapons. It's such bullshit. Are we still taping? No. <laughs> yes. Uh, God, God yes, bless you. Thank you, Alice. I, I just will. 
respond that absolutely yes, Iran during the entire entire uh, proceedings to make this a treaty, this conference, which was not a treaty, came up with the greatest points and were speaking truth to power like nothing, always made great sense. And I remember in the NPT treaty, which was a couple of years ago, I went up to our ambassador sitting in there and on the floor, we were there, it was a prep conference. You were there, I was there. And I went up to our ambassador in this conference room and I said, hey, uh, there, the Iranian delegations two rows behind you. Have, you. have you ever gone over there and like spoken to them? And he gave me such a look, like, are you crazy? Like, why would I do that? Why would I go over and talk to the Iranians? Are you, and left. But I was like, oh, you know, you should speak to them, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and that's, anyway, um, maybe I'll end if that's the end. I, I wanna end with two images, uh, if I may. One is when I was hiking, I hiked for a while with two war people, who are veterans of their war with Iraq, close, close to my age. I love these two guys. One English was okay, but uh, we went over all this stuff with the nuclear weapons and the war in our, our country, uh, you know, doing what they're doing, uh, calling Iran an, a terrorist state and an enemy state. And he, he just stopped me and he put his hand to my chest. And he put it to his chest. He goes, Anthony, those are governments. You have to remember, those are our governments. We are people. We are people. And we kept hiking. Anyway, I just want to give much thanks uh, for those people in the world. And people on this call know what I'm talking about. And the other thing, I forgot what it was. But uh, anyway, that's what emotion does. Uh, the, yeah, the other beautiful scene that I'll end with is the poetry. We all know Rumi was born and raised in Iran. So many great poets. And going to the gravesite of Hafez, who please, if you haven't, read some Hafez. So we went to his gravesite. And to me, this is one of the most moving things for all those people with images of Iran. All through the day and night, crowds come, Iranians come around his gravesite and they recite from memory. They recite, they recite poetry. Young people, old people, teenagers, they will just one by one, very respectfully, so if you can maybe keep that little scene, I have one picture in there, but that scene of the Iranians reciting beautiful, if you think of Rumi, his poetry, how today, 825 years later, we look to someone like Rumi for inspiration. So God bless you all. Thank you for listening. And it was an honor. I love the Veterans for Peace very much. I, I can't thank you enough for your service. God bless you. Thank Anthony, you. please don't leave so quickly. I'm not. Um, and thank you. It was yeah. a lovely, wonderful, informative presentation. Um, and we're all thankful. We're all thankful for working with you. What